Williams from A&M, Kingsville, Texas, our deep four Tampa Bay. Down to Carl Williams at the 10. 25, 35, 44 yard line. The Bills who have had uh, the worst in the league starting after opposing uh, kickoffs, 34 yard line uh, come out well on this one to the 44. Ken Irvin made the tackle and we have an injured Buccaneer Stecker the running back who backs up a Warwick Dunn is down. Sean King ready to come on the field. Uh, the young quarterback from Tulane who took over uh, last year when Trent Dilfer broke his collarbone in the 11th game. There are his numbers uh, this season. He grew up just uh, 12 miles to the south in St. Petersburg. Always a Tampa Bay fan. He said he, he loved it when the Buccaneers played on the road. He said because when he was a kid, they didn't televise home games. They never sold out. He'd run around in his Tampa Bay uniform and now is... Uh, uh, little guy dreams have come true as a big league quarterback. Well, times are different now, certainly here in Tampa, but right now the concern is for Aaron Stecker, who remains on the ground. Of course, Mike Allstott out for the rest of the regular season. He'll come into the screen from the left right there, number 22. Boy, and you see he took a pretty good shot, and again, they're having trouble getting him up onto his feet. There he is up. Favoring that uh, right leg. He, so with all stopped, clipped, huh? not a part of the offense, and now Aaron Stecker down, Tampa Bay, really short on running back. Here's the starting lineup for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Six wins, five losses. Pearson, then McDaniel and Christie, the pro bowlers who came here as free agents from Minnesota. Middleton and Wunsch up front. Warwick Dunn, he'll uh, have the heavy load today. Riddell Anthony, Jacquez Green outside along with Keyshawn Johnson. He wants the rock. Get me the rock, he says. And Dave Moore is the tight end. Stecker attended to as Sean King puts it in play out of a shotgun from the 44. Throws in the flat, and the tackle made a tight end Dave Moore by Henry Jones for little gain. Defensively for the Buffalo Bills, here's how they start today with Sean Price for the injured Phil Hanson. Hanson may be back next week. Big Ten Washington, Marcellus Wiley up front. The linebackers, and they're good. Rogers, Coward, who leads the league in tackles. Holosek and Newman. Chris Watson, watch out there. He's replacing the injured Antoine Winfield. Winfield out for the season. Jones, Carpenter, and Irvin completing the secondary. Give us to Dunn, and Dunn weaving his way through tacklers all the way to the Buffalo 34-yard line. Well, Warwick Dunn told us that I know I'm the featured guy now for the balance of the regular season. Right now, he ought to feature that offensive line. What a hole against a really stout defensive football team against the run. Warwick Dunn not even touched until he's 13 yards downfield. What a job of blocking up front by Tampa Bay. Done with a 20-yard pickup, first down at the 35. Done again. Slips and slides and picks up four to the 31 before, you know it, Sam Coward makes the tackle. Wade Phillips, the head man in Buffalo, and uh, interesting conversation with Bum Phillips' son yesterday, wasn't it, Dan? Well, it really was. Wade Phillips uh, has his team on a four-game winning streak, and this guy gets more criticism than any winning coach in the league. And it's all because of Johnson and Flutie, and yet he makes the decisions that win for his football team. So much of that criticism unjustified. King fires, and it's deflected incomplete as Chris Watson makes his first play. And Watson, who has not started an NFL game in his uh, brief career out of Eastern Illinois, he's in there for Winfield, makes the play. Well, he's in for Winfield, but their third corner is Donovan Greer, and he he's not playing in this game because he's got an ankle sprain. He didn't play in their game last week. So Watson is actually their fourth corner. So Tampa Bay on the one side thin at running back. Buffalo on the other side very thin in the secondary. Third down six. King scrambling and tackled at the 26. A yard shy of a first down and making the hit was Pat Williams along with Sam Coward. So on comes uh, Martin Gramatica, who has kicked 13 consecutive field goals. 
And he has a long leg. He has Number five seven, kicks of 50 Martin yards or more. And you can see the longest this year in the league, three, 55. It's five out of seven, Dick, from 50 plus. Oh, how's that for consistency? From the 35, the spot. So 45-yard field goal for this young man who grew up in Argentina. Well, not only long, but straight. The Bucks strike first. It's 3-0 with... Less than three minutes gone in the opening quarter. Three nothing as uh, Warwick Dunn's 20 yard run sets up this man, Martin Gramatica's 45 yard field goal. His brother, Gramatica's brother Bill, a senior, plays his college ball here at uh, University of South Florida, kicked a 63 yard field goal last week. And he figures to be playing on Sunday next year. So one brother's named Martin. And the other one's Bill. Bill. <laughs> the best okay. <laughs> now this one is Chris Watson. Sure it's not the... Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and the kick. Into the end zone to Watson, and he's going to take it out. And he's toppled at the 21-yard line. Rabi Abdullah making the tackle. And here comes Rob Johnson out for four weeks with a separated shoulder. Returned last week. And uh, he has been a very tough quarterback for Buffalo in terms of taking punishment. Injured all year. He uh, made that dive into the end zone to beat the Chiefs. No easy win on the road at Arrowhead. And as uh, Wade Phillips said, what if we could win on the road? Tampa Bay and Kansas City. That, that would be a real Quinella. Fighting the noise. Sean Bryson starts at running back. Quick drop. Eludes the pressure. Throws incomplete. Eric Moulds and a flag goes down on the sidelines. Near where Moulds was positioned but had his back to the play. Ed Hockley is our referee today. One of the best. And a good look right there that all the shiftiness at the quarterback position for the Buffalo Bills does not belong to Doug Flutie. Ooh, an offensive interference against the Bills, but you saw that Rob Johnson has some quicks. He's got good feet, and he evaded what looked like a sack to get out of the pocket and try to make something happen. And by the way, well, first, Huckley. Before the pass was thrown, pass interference, offense, number 80, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Well, here's Wade Phillips' starting lineup, trying to prevent that sack. Fina on an injured knee, Brown, Ostrowski, Nails, and Spriggs. Sean Bryson from Tennessee, Curtis Price, and Eric Moulds leads the league and catches 76. Jeremy McDaniel starts three wide receivers. The tight end is Jay Remersma. Bryson. And on first and long, he manages only a couple. Jamie Duncan, the middle linebacker, leading the Sean charge Bryson, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And here are the Buccaneers with their 43 sacks, second in the league behind New Orleans, 49. Ahana two, McFarlane, Warren Sapp. How good is he? Marcus Jones, you know who he is? We'll tell you. Sheldon Quarles, Jamie Duncan, and Derek Brooks three times to Honolulu. Abraham and Barber on the corners and Robinson and John Lynch dislocated left shoulder at Chicago last week and surprisingly starts today. One of the toughest hitters in the deep secondary in the league. Big hole, and it's Bryson charging through across the 20 to the 23 or 4 before Lynch can make the stop. That'll bring up third down and about eight. Well, that time Sean Bryson running the football cuts to his left, which fortunately for John Lynch is to his right shoulder. Watch that cut right there. It allows Lynch to come in and make the hit with his right shoulder. John Lynch, and we're gonna watch it very closely. I'm not sure how effectively he could do anything with his left arm. Get it up in the air, make tackles with it, grab ball carriers. We gotta watch it closely. Third and seven. Johnson, there's the sack, and that one ties the Tampa Bay franchise record and Warren Sapp and Marcus Jones fight over the sack. Well, it looked like Warren Sapp was the first one there and he just puts a whiff on Jamie Nails over at right guard. Warren Sapp the first one there. It'll be interesting does he get the whole sack or a half a sack. He's chasing the club record of 13 
which is owned by Hall of Famer Leroy Selman. And Marcus Jones has 11, only one half sack less than sack. Kicked by Chris Moore, and it's a beautiful spiral. Carl Williams at the 33, 45, 50, and to the Buffalo 47-yard line, and good field position again for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Just a bit over five minutes played in this opening quarter here in Florida, and the score, the Bucks three, the Bills nothing. At the 47. Football Palace of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will host Super Bowl 35 in January here on CBS. King and the Bucks start in Buffalo territory, and Warwick Dunn stops and starts and picks up one before uh, Keith Newman could make the tackle. And for Newman, that special, he grew up here in Tampa, went to Jefferson High School, was a tight end, then matriculated at North Carolina. Well, ground yardage is tough to come by against both of these defensive football teams. The Buffalo Bills ranked third in the league against the run. They only give up 80 yards a game, so... Anything work done and the Bucks get here today, they're going to have to work hard for it. Done again on second and nine, and he's met with a heavy hit led by Sam Coward and John Holosek. Three nothing uh, Bucks here. Let's go to New York, Jim Nance. Tackle by number 56, Sam Coward. Third down seven at the 44. All right, thank you, Jim. Uh, the Browns three and nine at the start, and of course Baltimore eight and four. I would not have bet that that would happen. That Cleveland would go right down the field against the Ravens. Third down and long. Shotgun, Sean King. Three wide receivers deep down the field. Riddell Anthony off his fingertips, covered by Ken Irvin. And that was that was a beautiful throw by Sean King because the coverage by Irvin on Anthony was very good. And King had to throw it long where his player has to make an excellent catch. But Irvin is right there. Look how good the coverage and a perfectly thrown ball right through the hands of Redell Anthony. Mark Royals, the 12-year veteran from Appalachian State, in his second tour here in Tampa Bay will punt it to Chris Watson standing at the Buffalo 10. Kick. Watson fair catch at the 16 yard line and that's where Rob Johnson and the Bills will begin with a 27 remaining opening quarter here in Tampa Bay. Welcome back with Tampa Bay leading 3 0. A reminder see what some of your favorite players like Jerome Bettis, Javon Kirsch, Junior Seau, Cordell Stewart, others have to say in their NFL.com diaries. It's all at NFL.com. Antoine Smith now in the backfield behind Rob Johnson. Bills at the 16 yard line, and it is Smith. A power back, and he blasts out close to the 20 where Marquez Jones makes the tackle. Bonnie, what do you have for us? Well, Tony Dungy had no intention of letting John Lynch play. He told me this morning he changed his mind because the doctors reassured him Lynch has no greater chance of that shoulder popping out today than any other week until he has off-season surgery. Talked to John before the game. He said, my shoulder doesn't really hurt, but I'm going to have a harness on that left shoulder try to prevent it from popping out again, guys. Thank you, Bonnie. A two-time Pro Bowler, Lynch, a real inspiration to that defense. On second down, Smith again. And doesn't get much at all. They push him back. Progress to the 20. 3-0 uh, Tampa Bay over Buffalo. And now to New York and Jim Nance. Tackle by number 72, Chidi Ahonadu. Third down, six at the 20. Cincinnati looking for its third win of the year, and Pittsburgh trying to get even at six all. Fans making it tough on Rob Johnson. Underneath to Cavill, but he's tackled at the 25. That's a couple of yards shy of the first down. Derek Brooks, number 55 for the Buccaneers, leads the team in tackles out of Florida State. 
And what Buffalo needed to do offensively was just get a couple first downs because they are losing the battle of field position right now. And a short little pass like that came up short, but they need to just stretch the chains a little bit. Again, the Buccaneers ought to come out of this with really good field position and a chance to add to their three-point lead. This is uh, being played at the wrong end of the field as far as Buffalo is concerned. Morris punt very high, but also quite short. Fair catch, Carl Williams at the 47-yard line. So again, Tampa Bay, three possessions, all three have started outside the Buccaneer 40-yard line. They lead it 3-0. Still can't figure out, Dan, how Santa gets down the chimney. That, that'll it's always puzzle me. Magic stick. It's magic. First to 10 at the 46. Happy Thanksgiving uh, weekend, everyone. How many shopping days, Dick? I think it's 29 and counting. I'm a double XL, just for <laughs> I, I got you. Great field position for Tampa Bay, and on first down, King going to throw, and he bites the turf for the first time as Sam Coward and Big Ted Washington meet at the quarterback. And Washington. Well, it's a double blitz right up the middle. Take a look at this. There's John Holosek, 52. He occupies a blocker, and that frees up Sam Coward. It just come more up the middle than Tampa Bay has blockers, and that is a formidable sight when you see, see 350 pounds of Ted Washington blocking your escape route. Seven. <laughs> Going up the middle was not an option for Sean King. Second and 17. And he goes down again as Coward back to back. It appeared he got a half a sack on the last with Washington, a full sack now. He had only three all season and one and a half here in the first quarter. Well, Sam Coward, who played his collegiate football at Florida State, very comfortable back here in Florida. Sean King, absolutely no chance whatsoever as his pocket disintegrates. And again, for the second time in a row, the pressure right up the middle. No one picks up Sam Coward for the second time. Coward, who's a... Uh... Mother Harriet has been campaigning for her son to make the Pro Bowl emailing. He said the count is wrong there too here in Florida. He should be up there with the most votes. And three in a row. Whoa. The hat trick for the Buffalo Bills and Marcellus Wiley gets the sack along with Newman following up. Ooh, I haven't seen that in a while where an offensive possession is three consecutive sacks. Sean King has a little more time. He's not even close, though, to getting rid of the football. At least that time he had a chance to plant and look downfield, but Sean gave no hint that he had found anybody even reasonably close to being open. And the kick now by Mark Royals. And Watson checks the defense and takes it and is tackled immediately at the 31-yard line. Now Buffalo finally starts from outside their 30. They trail by three. Yeah, I know the way you are. Buccaneers and Coca-Cola, always a winner, always Coca-Cola. It's been the uh, checkout counter for the defense, the uh, sacks, four sacks for Buffalo, two sacks for Tampa Bay, and the result, the Buccaneers, a minus 29 yards passing, only plus 14 for Buffalo. And Sam Coward, uh, the Pro Bowl season continues. He had three sacks all year, two and a half in the opening quarter against Tampa Bay. But now Buffalo is the team with the good field position. And that uh, sack-conscious defense of Tampa Bay digs in. Antoine Smith, just a yard. Chidi Ahanatu from the University of California, defensive end, makes the stop. And what an exciting, what an exciting finish I think we're in for, Dick. When you look at the races around both conferences. Uh, this is going to be one of the more memorable assemblies. Second and nine, dumps it off to Antoine Smith, not known for his receiving abilities. That's one of the reasons he was benched for several games earlier this year. Just shy of the first down, back to New York we go. All right, 
And when uh, fans down here in the Tampa Bay area see Trent Dilfer come off the bench and inspire that uh, Baltimore offense, they wonder, hmm, what if he were There's still in a Buccaneer uniform? They're tough on third down, Tampa Bay, and it's third and one. And out of the backfield, Sheldon Jackson. And Jackson, who lines up in the backfield, a tight end, gets the catch, only his third of the entire season, and with it a first down. It was actually about third and a foot, Dick, and I think what Buffalo is saying here is that if, if this was an incomplete pass, we're going for it anyway, seeing that they were in Tampa Bay territory. But there's a, uh, a very effective play and a high percentage pass to Jackson. Looking inside, Warren Sapp's going to draw a crowd. But he's got to play the run first on third and a foot. Jay Reimers, I think, has to be a big part of Buffalo's offense today if they're to win. He's lined up on the right side. And uh, it's Johnson on a bootleg. And he ducks out of bounds with help at the 32-yard line as Rondé Barber, the twin brother, the Giants running back Tiki, makes the play. Both twins playing at the University of Virginia. Barber coming to Tampa Bay as a third-round pick. He's the older brother. He's seven minutes older than uh, Tiki, so he has uh, certain rights and rules in the family. Well, and he's also having one heck of a year. He's run an interception in for a touchdown. He's run a fumble recovery in for a touchdown this year. When you get your defense scoring like that, those are playmakers. And Rondé Barber has certainly had a playmaker kind of year. Second and four. Johnson underneath to Moulds. And he dives to the 16-yard line. Uh, Dexter Jackson with a tackle. Uh, every time I see the ball thrown to Eric Moulds, I think of Keyshawn Johnson telling us yesterday, you know, they only throw me the ball two or three times a game. They throw it to Eric Moulds 15 times a game. Well, Eric Moulds uh, certainly is the leading character and the, and the figurehead of this Buffalo passing game. Why wouldn't you throw it to him time after time after time? The as guy a, catches him. That's right. And as a rookie showed how smart he was, he worked out with Jerry Rice in the offseason. Something about that number 80. That is. Antoine Smith, a single back. And he tries the left side and powers inside the 10 to the 9-yard line before Derek Brooks can make the stop. Buffalo's having to make an adjustment in their offensive backfield, too. They're Talented rookie Sammy Morris not playing because of the ankle. But look at the blocking up front. Look at that outstanding. And there comes John Lynch in from the side. <laughs> and I, this is so, it's so admirable what Lynch is doing here today. Playing with a shoulder that almost certainly will pop out at some course sometime during the game today. Second and two at Smith again. And he dives inside the five for a first and goal. Yeah, yesterday we saw John Lynch, who was a great star baseball and football at Stanford, and he was holding his young son in the left arm, and that's the injured arm. He said, I'm okay as long as I don't, don't lift him over my head. He's, he and his uh, wife celebrating his wife, Linda, the birth of the daughter just a week or so ago. What are these? You know, when you have a guy that tough in your locker room, it just picks up the whole team. We used to call guys like that the unguided missile. They come in, at, but Lynch is a guided missile. He hit what he aims at. Smith and down there. He can't dance uh, with that defense stacked up against the run, and he earns very little. And Lynch up to support again. Dexter Jackson. See, I said he. he he hits what he aims at, and my kids at home just went, oh, Dad, you ended a sentence in a preface. I wasn't going to you know, I, 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 I get on my kids all the time about that, and what do I do? Under pressure, I blow up. <laughs> oh, we're, we're just writing it down. It doesn't really matter. I know. Can I come back and play next week? <laughs> Second and goal. 3 nothing. Tampa Bay. Johnson fires into the flat. Incomplete Sheldon Jackson. It was a tough catch. Had he made it, he probably would have scored. John Lynch came on the blitz. Rob Johnson is having to deal with the fact that he's got number 47 coming right at him there. He's not a factor, though. Rob able to just deliver the ball, and it's just a perfectly thrown ball right onto the hands of Jackson. Uh, you can't expect Rob Johnson to do it much better than that. Ed Jackson, as we said earlier, made his third catch of the season, so there's a reason why those numbers are low. Reimersma will draw a crowd here. 
He's the tight end, right side. Fearless Price in motion, and Rob Johnson uses Buffalo's first time out of the half. It comes with 9.51 remaining before the intermission. Back on the good ship, Buccaneers, where Buffalo threatens to cut into that 3 0 Tampa Bay lead. Third and goal inside the five. Linton and Bryson split backs. Johnson. Finally throws. What a catch by Jonathan Linton! Spearing the ball. Uh, Dwight Clark, a la Clark, leaping high in the back of the end zone to give Buffalo the touchdown. And it's just another illustration why Wade Phillips wants Rob Johnson as his quarterback. It's not only Doug Flutie, a guy who can get out of the pocket and make something happen. Rob Johnson is as good a scrambling quarterback as there is in the National Football League. He buys himself another three or four, maybe even five seconds before he finds Lynn. Steve Christie adds the extra point, and Jonathan Linton, only his third catch of the entire year. But look at the quality of this touchdown reception that gives Buffalo the lead. Jonathan Linton played his college ball at North Carolina, his second career touchdown reception, only his third catch of the entire NFL year and what a beauty it was for Buffalo. Yeah, it was a wonderful illustration of Linton staying alive and separating himself Dick. He got away from the crowd to give him a target. Steve Christie kicks it and it's Liddell Anthony inside the five. He's got some speed. And he's out to the 27 28 yard line. Anthony, Anthony uh, seeing duty with the injury early to Aaron Stecker. Let's take a look at that touchdown throw. Here's Jonathan Linton, who's going to come over here and just run it out. But when he sees Johnson on the scramble, goes back into the back of the end zone to find a soft spot to settle. See, here's Linton just running the little out at the five. Now he sees Rob's on the move and watch him separate. Look at him get into the back of the end zone and Rob Johnson under control. Not scrambling to run, but scrambling to throw. Puts it right on Linton's hand. And the Bills uh, with only six yards for the Buccaneers total. That because of the four Buffalo sacks of quarterback Sean King and Warren Warwick Dunn gets about three on first down into the arms of the omnipresent Sam Coward. Keyshawn Johnson, get me the rock, he keeps crying, but very few attempts. Well, right here you see that he hasn't been throwing the ball. The guy who's getting the most throw for Tampa is a guy named Loss. King thrown for loss. Oh, very nice. I like that. Second down and seven. King complete to Jacquez Green, the third-year receiver from Florida. He's the number two receiver behind Keyshawn Johnson. Chris Watson made the tackle for first down Tampa Bay. And what do you know? Sean King actually got a look downfield without getting sacked. Sacked four times in the first quarter. If you'll give him a little protection, at least he's got a fighting chance. Maybe uh, while they had some time over on the sidelines, the Buccaneer offensive line was able to tighten things up a little bit. We'll see. Take to Dunn. King complete again to Green. Back to back. First down passes. And they're working on Chris Watson, who has replaced Antoine Winfield out for the year. Winfield, the top cover man for the Buffalo Bills. My, isn't Sean King a better quarterback when he doesn't have Sam Coward throwing him to the ground? Again, perfect pass protection. And Watson just not able to make the break with the same efficiency that Jacquez Green is. But look at the blocking. The perfect pocket, able to step up field, follow through. Sean King delivers. First down at the Bills, 45. King again. Has to throw it away as he is hit by Keith Newman. Dave Moore, the tight end, was in the area. Second down, 10. Boy, and Newman what really broke down and was in perfect position to not let Sean King to the get, get to the outside. It looks like he has, but look at him break down, get low, and then get right into the legs of Sean King. 
Keith Newman, a guy who stepped in and became the starter when Gabe Northern was let go. He went to Minnesota, a Tampa native playing here in town, and he has really just another one of those guys that's done a great job. It's done on the draw out of the shotgun, and uh, flags go down as he smothered at the 43-yard line. And it's holding quick signal from Hockley against Tony Dungy's Bucks. I mentioned Keith Newman, Dick, but it just seems this Buffalo Bills team defensively just keeps rolling new people and they don't miss a stride. You know, you think about it, Thomas Smith is playing in Chicago. He'll yeah. be the quarterback. Oh, offense, number 62, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. And they've not signed Buffalo an unrestricted free agent in two years. For the most complete NFL coverage, including game by game analysis and potential playoff scenarios, all you got to do is click on NFL at CBS. Dot sportsline.com. Don't forget, uh, don't forget, Kurt Schultz is gone. Bruce Smith is gone. Four new starters defensively. Second and 20. First receiver is covered. Uh oh. And he gets it away and he avoids what would have been a huge loss of some 13 yards as Sam Rogers trying to get him down along with Marcellus Wiley. That was heads up by Sean King, realizing that he had escaped that tight end to tight end pocket. He got it right. He's not far enough out yet. There he is. And that was a smart move. If you get it back anywhere near the line of scrimmage, you're allowed to throw it away and not get the intentional grounding. And smart this young man is, Sean King, and so is this uh, veteran coach uh, contemplating how to confuse the opposing quarterback. Take a time out here with 7.14 left in the second quarter. Back at Raymond James Stadium, as we said, the site of the Super Bowl in late January, also the home of the University of South Florida Bulls and Tampa Bay Mutiny and Major League Soccer. Third down and 20 for the Buccaneers at their own 45. King. Sacked again. That's number five as Marcellus Wiley and Keith Newman converged on young uh, Sean King. And I know that there's a lot of frustration here with the fans in Tampa Bay with Sean King, but last time I checked, this is a second year quarterback who only had seven starts last season. There are going to be times of indecision, and there is a learning curve, and there will be growing pains along the way. Get used to it. Punt by Royals to Chris Watson at the 21. He fumbles the ball and the scramble, and who's got it? And it's Buffalo's ball. As Watson flirted with disaster, Al Singleton was downfield to make the initial hit. One thing Buffalo has done very well is not cough up the football. And who was that? It was Tillman, Traveris Tillman, who was able to fall on the fumble. Well, Chris Watson is the primary return man, and you see that he's got the football in the right arm. Ooh, and it does come, it does come out right when he's sitting right on top of the buck. And that ball is just for everybody to grab. And a wonderful job there by Tillman of covering it up. Al Singleton, the, the guy that caused it, but Watson got a little lucky there. He's put the ball on the floor before. Tillman, the rookie from Georgia yeah. Tech, happy about his contribution, and Watson, he'll afford to do that. And, and, and Watson has done it in the past. He's, he's got to get a little better in protecting the football. Antoine Smith, the tailback from the 16. And it's a fake reverse and a give inside to Smith. Out across the 20 where Brooks and Duncan linebackers make the stop and number 69 uh, shows uh, that's Marcus, some hurts. That's yeah. Marcus Briggs the right tackle for the Buffalo Bills who you saw the play comes right into the back of his legs. And he was lucky that he kicked it out as much as he did. He he took a hit. He took a little nick but it could have been a lot worse. Watch the end of this play. There's Spriggs on the right of your screen. And right on the back of his left ankle, ooh, you saw it roll. And that did some damage, but it, it could have been a lot worse. 
It looks like Spriggs is going to have to leave the game. Robert Hicks, who was the starter at the first of the year and lost his job to Spriggs, comes in to replace him. He's 6'7", 330, aren't they all? From Mississippi State. <laughs> well, Spriggs, as you said, uh, out. Hicks in, 6'7", 330. Right guard Jamie Nails, 6'6", 360. What, uh, what did Warren Sapp say that uh, Nails was? A space eater. <laughs> He's a, it's a long way around him. Sapp is only 300 pounds at 6'2". Second along four, Johnson again the scramble and slide at the 21. That'll be a sack. He's a yard short of the line of scrimmage, and Marcus Jones then will get number 12. Jim Nance. Third down five at the 21. And Jim, don't think that Trent Dilfer is in a hot topic down here in Tampa Bay with them really not having a, a backup. Eric Zier backs up Sean King, but a lot of attention being paid to the success that Trent Dilfer is having in Baltimore. Third down and five. Sean Bryson, the running back. Johnson, also a running quarterback. Throws back across the field. Incomplete. A flag is down. The ball too long for Bryson and too short for Reimers Mutt. Chidi Ohanatu was Black. the man chasing Johnson and someone uh, guilty of holding to protect Johnson. This one could be declined to force the punt. I think it might be offensive interference against Buffalo. Ed Hockey Lee gave the signal for offensive interference. And apparently it'll be declined. Before the pass was thrown, pass interference, offense, number 80. The penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. That's the second time today that Eric Moulds has been flagged for offensive interference. Uh, we're, we're just in a wrestling match over there with Brian Kelly. He was held as much as he pushed. That was a... Uh, well, he got the last hold and the last throw. And that's the one they see. Yeah. Chris Moore... This one, a poor kick, very wobbly, and Carl Williams fair catches at the 46-yard line. Tampa Bay again, midfield, to start the series, trailing 7-3. to three. Thank you, Bonnie. And uh, here's the jetting off to Tampa numbers, comparing him with last year with the Jets. He did win one award this week. He won the Golden Gobbler Award. He gained more weight than any Tampa Bay player over the Thursday eating period. King to the sidelines and complete. It's Jacquez Green again, and this time working on Ken Irvin. First down. Well, the. The main receiver for the Bucks so far in this game, without a doubt, has been Jacquez Green. Sean King finding him because he's open. That ball, a risky throw from King. That should have been to the sideline shoulder of Jacquez Green. It was back to the inside of the field. King got away with it. Three catches now for the former Florida I got you, star. I got you. Watch that draw over here. Watch that draw. Watch the draw, yells the defense from the 43. King throws and hit immediately as Keyshawn, who gains only three yards, and right into the arms of Keon Carpenter, who has emerged as a wonderful safety for Buffalo. He has five interceptions this year, best in the AFC, four in the last three games. Again, he's a first-year starter. Kurt Schultz manned that position for so many years, and he manned it so well for the Bills. But uh, as we talked earlier, the, the seamless transitions continue for Buffalo. Second and seven is Keyshawn Johnson finally with a short catch. Now the throw, incomplete for Green, and a big collision, and there's going to be a penalty against either Watson or Carpenter for Oh, I think the they're going to get Carpenter for the late hit. You know, they say it's a defenseless receiver. 
Boy, at first glance, I, I wasn't sure Carpenter could even avoid that. Let's take, we'll take a close look at that, and that's Sam Rogers, the linebacker for Buffalo. And boy, there's a lot of uh, held breath right now on the Buffalo sideline. Personal foul, unnecessary, unnecessary roughness. roughness, fence number 29. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. If the receiver can't catch the ball and he's in what they call the quote-unquote vulnerable position, you're not supposed to hit him as a defensive back. So let's take a look at this going right down the sideline. Jacquez Green, the ball's in the air over his head. And, boy, I, and oh, that's, I don't agree with that. Guy. I don't agree with that ball. See, Carpenter isn't really trying to deliver a blow no. here. In He's fact, trying Green to get out of the way. Green falls into no. Carpenter. My first impression was right. That's a, uh, uh, that's really, that's calling it too tight. You can't, you can't ask a guy to get out of the way and make himself evaporate into thin air. Nevertheless, a 15-yard penalty that takes the ball to the 25-yard line, and the concern now on Sam Rogers, the veteran backer from Colorado. Such a reliable player, not the star, but he does his, uh, plays his role so well. Boy, when you see a player like that who's reluctant to even roll over onto his back. Let's look at the left side of the screen now. See, and you, we just see Sam, he crumbles to the ground right there at midfield. Couldn't really see exactly what happened to him. But next in line corner, he's not playing. He's active, but he's not playing because of a severe ankle sprain. And Phil Hansen still out. Hopefully he'll be back next week. They're starting the defensive 25. end. So it's a, a war of attrition here with the Bills defensively. So King works against a new linebacker, Corey Moore, after the 15-yard penalty. This one batted right back in his face as penetration by Sean Price out of the University of Pacific, a guy that just has a great motor. Second down, 10. And he is right in Sean King's face. This is a bad, a lot of times you see bad ball from a guy who never leaves the line of scrimmage. Not so with Sean Price right there. He is only about two feet away from Sean King. Again, the pocket collapsed for Tampa. From uh, North Tahoe, California, where next to football, skiing is his deal. They pick up Corey Moore. The throw is incomplete to Keyshawn Johnson, and good coverage by Ken Irvin. And I think a good job there by Les Steckel, the offensive coordinator, of getting Sean King out of the pocket there. The, 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 he's not had much success in a, in a classic stance in the pocket throwing the football. This, his protection just hasn't been there. So change it up, give the defense something to think about, put him on the move one direction or the other, trying to let him see at least some portion of the field without a hand in his face. Well, Keyshawn now has uh, been thrown to twice, caught one. That's what he had in, the, in almost the entire game, too, at Chicago last week. Third and ten. King floats it up there and wide open is Warwick Dunn to the three-yard line. So they picked on Corey Moore, who was covering Warwick Dunn out of the backfield. Oh, and that's, that's not an accident. You know they're going to go right to him. You've got the rookie against one of the best receiving backs. There to the right of your screen, going upfield. And what a beautiful pass by King. But Corey Moore, under no circumstances at any time in this game, going to run all the way down the field with Warwick Dunn. Got to watch out when you sit in the north uh, end zone. They shoot the cannons even when they don't score a touchdown. Back with 341 left in the half, and uh, Tampa Bay two yards away from the lead. Well, they're, they're working hard to reload these cannons after prematurely <laughs> launching a salvo. <laughs> what, what happened, well, the way they got confused is the one official did signal touchdown, and then they quickly came back and spotted the ball at the, uh, the two-and-a-half-yard line. But the one official kind of sent the wrong message up to the uh, – the, uh, the artillery the guys jelly. on the ship. The old Jolly Roger, you know, they got the, the quick saber, the quick trigger up there. The See the enemy. If I sat underneath those things, I would jump out of my skin. Turn the blue beard to the beard black when you sit up there. And yeah, whistle uh, stops play. 
Bills and the Bucks now. Well, we've each. got a challenge. We've got a challenge over on the Buffalo sideline. They threw their red flag out. Well, it appeared that uh, Dunn clearly was in bounds when he caught the ball, then fell out of bounds. Rolling on the field, but the pass was complete. Now let's go take a look at it. Buffalo is risking their only remaining timeout here in the first half as Wade Phillips uh, couldn't get through with the buzzer. He actually had to throw the red flag out onto the field, which is their backup option. Let's take a look. I don't think it looks to me that that Dunn has complete control of the football. He's not doesn't look to me like he's juggling it. I think that's a, a good call by the officials on the field. Does he have firm possession of the football? Oh no there's well, a you, see, you yeah. see it did come away from his chest the ball from that angle we got a really good look at the fact from right there the question is he did separate his hands and his chest from the football and you may be able to make the case that his rear end was sitting out of bounds when he finally clutched that ball to his chest his feet were in bounds. That's not an issue. The, the two feet were firmly down as he made initial initial catch. But then that little brief bobble. That bobble may be enough for Ed Hockley to reverse this call. Remember the call on the field was legitimate catch. It's funny you looked at it from the one angle right. and you don't see that bobble it looked like he had it cleanly. But then from the second angle the, the camera really close to it. Uh, bring that baby up and look at it one more time. There's the bobble, and now where does but he have possession? But you don't see the bobble as clearly. There. Yeah, right there, you can see his his hands came off the football. Boy, is that a tough call? That is a tough, tough call. Again, he's got the he's got to see definitive proof. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if Hockey Lee overturns that call. And in my, this is well worth Buffalo gambling this last time out. That's that's something I think they have to challenge. So the minute and a half has elapsed. So here's the call. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands as called. The first receiver bobbled the ball to regain possession before he went out of bounds. Therefore, it is a completion. First down. Buffalo is charged with their third and final timeout. Now, this has been a tough series for Wade Phillips. He loses his linebacker. Rogers gets a tough call on the personal foul against Carpenter and then loses this argument. Well, if he regained possession of that football before going out of bounds, the space between his rear end and the white stripe out of bounds was measured in Milla something <laughs> millimeters microns you can get in there with a caliper I think to to make that call but there wasn't that irrefutable ed evidence to no, return was, the call either so I, that's that could have gone either way so first and goal Tampa Bay at the two yard line with Charles Kirby in for the injured Mike Allstott at fullback Rabi Abdullah is the tailback. He's the bigger running back. The fake by King. He can run this one in. Or can he? Yes. Touchdown. And we've got an injured Buffalo player down here. I think Keon Carpenter's still down on the ground. And Buffalo just can't afford to lose anybody else in their secondary. They're almost out of warm bodies down there. They signed Ray Hill this week after he had been cut a month ago by Miami just to have an extra body. Well, a bootleg all the way with the play action to the right. They're putting this entirely in Sean King's hands. You can see he puts the fake on Carpenter and goes back to the inside. Let's look at it and see. Does Carpenter roll over his ankle? Carpenter's going to come in from the left here. Oh, yeah, you saw him slide initially, and then awkwardly his left ankle kind of caught underneath him. Well, Carpenter 
will be helped and it would appear it will go immediately into the locker room testing that ankle as he uh, does so just this note on Sean King and it kind of brings in a little Buccaneer history you forget that Steve Young started his NFL career here that was his fifth rushing touchdown to tie the club record set by the left hander Young 14 years ago. On our pregame show that says, give us 17 points. That's all we want. 17 will win them for you. Grammatica adds the extra point. 54 yard drive, six plays. And the Bucks reclaim the lead. Look at Buccaneer Cove in the north end zone. The First battle ship. Battle of defenses continues. Buffalo came in number five. Tampa Bay number six. Now it's the Buccaneers' turn. They try to stop Buffalo, leading ten to seven. Oh my! John Lynch invading the backfield. This, this is some performance by this Pro Bowl strong safety. Uh, again, I'm telling you, nobody thought John Lynch was going to play today. Even Tony Dungy, look at him come in from the right side to stick right in the chest. <laughs> There's not a better run-stopping strong safety in football. Look at that. Look at that hit. It's hard to imagine, folks, how much that has to hurt when you have a dislocated left shoulder. He deposits the ball carrier, Bryson, for a two-yard loss. Second and 12. Johnson just does get it away. Peerless Price tackled immediately by Derrick Brooks. Well, Dick, right now, both of these quarterbacks have been hit hard by the opposing defenses, but right now, Rob Johnson is the one who is starting to look a little frayed around the edges. He's moving pretty slowly. Third and seven. Here comes the blitz for the Buccaneers. The throw complete. Reamers by in the open. 40 and 30. Before the Buccaneers catch up with him, Donnie Abraham, big, big play for Wade Phillips Bills. Boy, does Rob Johnson do a good job here of finding Jay Reimersma. Again, he's his favorite target in a situation like that. And Donnie Abraham just thought he had a play on the football. And look at John Lynch right there. Tries to put the hit on Reimersma, but Jay faked him by the stutter step. Abraham makes a play. Out of position, spins in front. Reimersma wins that one. Longest play of the game, 35 yards. And there's the hit in the backfield again. This time Bryson met by Brooks. No chance for Sean Bryson. Well, that's Monty Kiffin's call, the defensive coordinator for Tampa Bay, calling the run blitz on first down. And that is. <laughs> That, talk about no chance whatsoever. That, that's a linebacker's dream. You get dialed right into the hole. No lead blocker. And that's just like the first day of training camp when he has a nutcracker drill. That's just a drill. Derek Brooks continuing his uh, bid for another pro bowl. Been the last three. Second and long for Johnson. Scrambles again. Looking for molds. Throws for Moles. Intercepted. Was he in bounds? No, is the call. Damian Robinson did not get both feet in. There's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. I think we've got something here against Tampa. Right in front of Wade Phillips. He helped the officials best he could. As coaches do. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Number 99. 15 yard penalty, first down. Warren Sapp guilty of a big crime here. We saw Warren Sapp immediately going over saying, I didn't do anything. Well, there's only 199 on the field. 
Rob Johnson had delivered the ball and Warren lowered the shoulder and drove right through him. Luckily, will not put up with that. Illegal substitution. Oh. 12 men in the huddle by the defense. Five yard penalty. Oh. It's still first down. Ed faked us out. <laughs> Ed faked us out with that one. Well, Ed was not about to be distracted by Warren Sapp barking at him. He was counting. He kept an eye on the Buffalo huddle. He wasn't here. He was counting. You can send in a player. But the player that he's replacing has to leave the huddle. You're not allowed to have a dozen in there at one time. It's not fair to the defense. Rookie Kwame Cavell, the wide receiver. Flags go down. Here to be full start against the Bills. Sheldon Jackson, uh, who was injured earlier, left uh, early from his stance, but he wasn't the only one. The fourth ball was snapped. Ball starts. Offense, number 88. Five yard penalty. It's still first down. Jackson right in front of referee Hockley. Carl Moss. Little doubt about his feelings. Well, those are just, those are penalties that aren't made in the heat of battle. Those are concentration first penalties. A ball start. And those are the most frustrating to a coaching staff. So two five-yard penalties take the ball from the 20 to the 30. As Johnson fires incomplete for Moles. Rondé Barber took away the inside. So with the penalties, now a testier field goal attempt should it get to that. Second down and 20. Defensive football, this is good stuff. Five wides for Johnson, who throws to the open man, and it's Jeremy McDaniel, his first catch of the game, who has made the club as an undrafted free agent a year ago out of Arizona and really produced this year. And a smart play by Rob Johnson, finding somebody downfield other than Molds or Reimersma. And he completely surprises Tampa Bay this time by working to McDaniel. Brian Kelly had decent coverage, but that was just an outstanding throw by Johnson. 11 yards of the 20 Johnson needed, but he's back in field goal range, third and nine. Good protection. Underneath the peerless price, but can he get, he fumbles the ball, and Tampa Bay has recovered. And here comes Brian Kelly, finally tackled by John Cena. times have you seen a player spit out the football when he's trying to do something extra to help his team and that is the case here as peerless price is just struggling to find his way to the first down marker this is just an extra effort on his part doing everything he can do to get there is that Shelton Quarles who knocks that ball loose after the interception the runner was ruled down by contact. Tampa Bay keeps the ball at the 11-yard line. Put down. Well, the turnover stands. And again, it's just Peerless Price trying to dig out a crucial extra yard or two to give his team a first down. And that ends up costing his team dearly. The field goal. It, it wouldn't have been a first down at all. Fourth and one. But the field goal would have tied it for Buffalo. Here we're going to get a good look. Watch the right side of your screen. You can't see the number. That's Derek Brooks coming in right there. But the knee is still off the ground. Peerless Price. That is a fumble. Fourth. Ed Hockley having trouble getting his field mic to work. It's the fourth time this year that Brooks has forced a turnover uh, on a fumble. They're going to say that he that Kelly wasn't down by contact. But it doesn't matter if the whistle blew. You can't challenge it. The ruling on the field was that after the ball was fumbled, an official on the field blew a whistle at that spot after the turnover. For that reason, Tampa Bay keeps the ball at the spot of recovery, first down. And there was not a challenge by T Tampa Bay. 
it is not a play that can be challenged by rule. And you can see why the Buccaneer fans are oh. going because he wasn't down by contact. All right, let's look at it here from behind. We know it's a legitimate fumble, and it is a legitimate recovery by Buc the Buccaneers. Right there, there's Brian Kelly, but he is up, and he's touched after he's up. That cost Tampa a lot of yards. Get to done, and he's tripped up by Marcellus Whaley. But just a reminder, folks, remember the operative phrase that we used to use, the inadvertent whistle? And that's what happens right there when the official rules that he's down by contact, and it's going to happen not there. Brian Kelly's going to get the football. He's up, but right there, the whistle blows. And so anything that happens after that is irrelevant because the whistle blew. It's over and unreviewable. Second and nine after Dunn gets only a yard on first down. He gets the handoff again and met right at the line of scrimmage. Pat Williams and John Holasek side to side to bring Dunn down. Pat Williams. Let's see if we can hear the whistle. Let's look at it one more time. Third down. Yeah, you hear the whistles blowing. Of course, you heard the whistles blowing after Brian Kelly was already up and running with the football. Small consolation to the Tampa fans. Well, third and nine, and Sean King into the shotgun. They're only one for seven, Tampa Bay on third down. Lots of time. And good work here by King, but runs it out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Jay Foreman on the coverage. Foreman playing for the injured Sam Coward. Marcellus Wiley was the man who flushed him out. Almost everybody in the Buffalo secondary is playing for somebody else. Kenny Irvin's almost all alone over there at right cornerback. Again, though, Sean King not being stupid with the football. Not throwing into coverage. Better to run with. And the seven Buccaneers and Mark Royals pick. Big spiral. Watson fair catch at the 37 yard line. Yeah, Buffalo certainly out gaining Tampa Bay offensively, but haven't put them on the scoreboard. The Bucks a must game. Lead it by three. into points. Well, the fumble by Fearless Price at the Tampa Bay 11, plus the missed opportunity at the end of the half. Fearless Price trying to make amends, but as he gave ground, he was tackled immediately by Brooks and Barber. Today's game is brought to you by Thank you, Bonnie. And of course, he's produced the leading tackler in the entire league. Johnson running for his football life, and he's able to skip out of bounds at the 45-yard line with McFarlane, Ahanatu, and Sapp, three behemoths chasing him down. Rob Johnson, nowhere to go downfield. Look at Warren Sapp, the pursuit from behind. If ever you looked at somebody and, and you would say, don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, it, it is not a glamorous physique that Warren Sapp has, but boy, don't get don't get distracted by that. That guy has great speed and quick, active feet. Third and short. Johnson again has to run to the 40. Dives for the sticks. Did he make it? Yes, they're going to mark it at the 49-yard line. And a first down. No, no. They're pointing back at the 45-yard line. And if that's the case, he didn't make it. If one official had marked it short. And one official went upside down on the sidelines. I think head linesman uh, Mark Hittner, he took a uh, he took a hit himself. Ahana too tried to get look at the effort by Rob Johnson and trying to get the first down. But he steps out of bounds shy of the 45, so it's third and two. We might be able to see the official take a hit here. Whoa, there he goes right there. Mark Hittner took a hit. So he's back on his feet, and you think this is an easy this, job, huh? No. And that's a, a good look at why a lot of teams don't let injured guys stand on the sidelines. Moore almost 
as his kick blocked or contact by Nate Webster, but no flag. And uh, Tampa Bay with good field position out right at the 30-yard line with 2.18 remaining in the third, and the Buccaneers still leading by three. And welcome back, and happy holidays indeed from CBS Sports. First down, Tampa Bay at the 30-yard line. Passing yards, Buccaneers with only 22 yards throwing the ball. The only touchdown, Sean King's two-yard scramble. He gives to Dunn, and Dunn, whose first run of the game was for 20 yards, had only 17 yards on the next nine tries. Well, that's a uh, a good call there, Jim. Boy, you're right. That is a pitiful effort. On uh, second and four, Dunn looking for a hole, finds one, and he's out to the 43-yard line. Henry Jones makes the tackle. Warwick Dunn, what a young man he is. You know his story. Grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. His mother, a police officer she was gunned down in duty seven years ago and he's lived his life a uh, devotion and tribute to his mother in many ways he just uh, one of those athletes that when you say where are the heroes today where are the role models you're looking at one right now and you're also looking at a guy that has to shoulder the running game for the Bucks the rest of the year on first down King gets out of the trap now lobs a throw complete to Moore and the tight end is in Buffalo territory with a first down at the 43. Palasek made the tackle. And Sean King under a lot of pressure. Marcellus Wiley was all over him. Again, it, it, he's not finding anybody initially. He has to move. He gets away from first Wiley. And it's not pretty. That's a kind of a little Joe Cap toss right there, but. Very effective for the first down. Sean King needs success in small little bites. Joe Cap gets a call. There you go. Dunn slips trying to make okay. that cut on that wet turf. And again, it rained all last night and even up through the practice period today here in Tampa. And the sky's still a bit heavy as the final seconds of the third quarter evaporate. What are the odds that Sean King knows who Joe Cap is? <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds of half our audience does? <laughs> Joe Cap played at California and was the vaulting running quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. And that's it for three. Tampa 10, Buffalo 7. We'll return to Raymond James Stadium right after this word from your local station. And welcome back to Tampa, Florida. Pirate ship, a part of the... Uh, Colorful decoration. It's a terrific uh, stadium. And that'll be the site where Jim Second Nance and his team will provide you with all the action prior to Super Bowl 35 here on CBS with Phil Sims, Greg Gumbel. And King throws. Good move made by Jock Quez Green. And it picks up a first down at the 29 for Boris Tillman. The Georgia Tech rookie makes the tackle for Buffalo. Boy, an explosive break back to the middle by Jacquez Green right here. First down, Tampa Bay. Working against Chris Watson, the corner over there. And he doesn't make the play. And finally, it's going to have to be Traveris Tillman there, number 28. He's in for Keon Carpenter at free safety. So Henry Jones and Ken Irvin, the only two starters in the Buffalo secondary right now. Tillman and Watson filling in. Done now. Oh, you could hear that Look smack. That as a big Pat Williams and Sean Price, two tackles, make the stop. 10-7, Tampa Bay. Loss would take them to 6-6. A win gets their hopes back for a playoff at 7-5. Buffalo has won four in a row. King fires wide open again. Is Keyshawn Johnson this time, and he has a first down at the 15-yard line. And that depleted secondary of the Buffalo Bills now starting to give up some easy catches. Keyshawn uh, probably saying to himself, "You know, I've been here all the all this time. Looked like he had a nice little push off there on Chris Watson. Got the left hand on the shoulder pads and got a little extra separation." But if you've got an opponent hurt, take advantage. I got you. Done. For five, for seven, and then pushed back at the 10-yard line. John Holosek, a 
veteran from Illinois makes another play. This year, Tampa Bay in the red zone, or they call it the green zone when they're inside their opponent's 20 yard line. Last year, they were only 33% touchdowns. This year, 61% touchdowns. So, in that regard, Les Tuckle's uh, new offense has been uh, much more productive. Second and four. The fake to Dunn. The throw underneath to Moore. The tight end hit immediately at the six yard line and driven back by Jones and Hollisek. Well, a lot of newcomers in the Buffalo defense, but that time they went after two veterans, and Hollisek and Henry Jones were all over. Moore, take a look at this thing right here. They're working the side of the field with a strong safety, Henry Jones. You know he's locked on the tight end. John Hollisek working his hook zone to the inside. And there are two of the guys that are just Hanson is gone. Coward is gone. Greer is gone. Winfield is gone. Carpenter's gone. Third and one and Kirby in to block. Done the tailback. And it's done. Gets the block. And he is in the end zone for a touchdown. Produce once again in the green zone to the Buccaneers. Capping a 70 yard drive in 10 plays, Warwick Dunn. Uh, only, surprisingly, his second rushing touchdown of the year. And I think he got a good block out front from Charles Kirby, the fullback taking Mike Allstott's place. Dramatica's point try is there. And uh, Tampa Bay, Warren Sapp said, give us 17. That's what the defense has, 17-7. Tampa Bay a 10-point lead, going 70 yards in 10 plays. And what did Warren Sapp say? Just give us 17 points and we'll win the game for you. Talking about his defense, that's what they've got, 17. And both coaches said, we'll win it in the fourth quarter. And so Dunn's touchdown comes here in the fourth. Romatica kicks it off to Bryson and Watson. Very little productivity out of these returns for the Bills. Watson. And a little better this time out to the 30 yard line before he's tripped up by Dexter Jackson. And the timeout called. 11 26 remaining, fourth quarter. And welcome back 17 7 Buccaneers you look at that defense they didn't allow a touchdown to the Bears last week yet lost and that angered them and Warren Sapp the spokesperson there's Sean Bryson breaking outside kicking out of a tackle oh what an effort by Bryson as he picks up the first down at his 46 yard line back to the touchdown Go back and take a look at this from right be there. You're playing middle linebacker right here, and it's going to come right at you. Great fly. Watch the block right there by Dave Moore, the tight end. Take a look at that as he locks up Jay Foreman and just plants him. And then look at the lead block right there, kicking Keith Newman out, is fullback Charles Kirby. That to give kudos to the lead blockers. Warwick Dunn stuffs it in. Johnson steps up. Slides wisely at the Buffalo 49 in front of Derek Brooks. Derek Brooks. Gain of about three. Fake by Johnson. A great fake. Then he throws to Antoine Smith to make it to tight end Sheldon Jackson. And Jackson is shy of the first down at the 45. Never have a quarterback and a receiver been as wide open as both of these two guys were. I thought he was right going to run it, didn't I, you? Well, I, I think maybe it's just a, a case of Rob Johnson being a little beat up and saying, hey, if I've got a chance to let somebody else take the hit, let's let Sheldon do it. He spots the ball closer to the 46-yard line, so it's third and almost a full two yards. Lots of yards, not many points for Buffalo.
Here's that reverse, this time to Price. He's got some room. Gets a block. Turns it upfield. And finally, out of bounds. And let's see where they mark this one all the way inside the 20-yard line. That's the play that wasn't being respected much earlier. And they pick their spot, and Price gets a big gainer, 27 yards. Boy, and does this ever get set up nicely. This is uh, taking advantage of the team speed. But I look at the fake on the sideline right here. It takes the right here, Donnie Abraham, number 21. He pulled up thinking Peerless Price was going to run out of bounds. Donnie Abraham had a chance to make that play, and he stopped. Well, to the Tampa Bay 19, another invasion for Buffalo. They haven't come away with much. Johnson fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Eric Moles. And Moles has his fifth score of the year into the Bills. Strike quickly on that series. It took them only a minute. And that time, Randy Barber, the corner, is the victim of Eric Moles. Just classic drop back, no play action. Beautiful blocking, and it's man coverage. Barber on Moulds, and it's no contest. No contest at all as Eric Moulds makes the break to the corner, and Barber left way behind. Steve Christie, who nearly missed a field goal at the end of the first half, hits the extra point, and Buffalo right back in the game. Almost nine minutes left. Johnson to Moulds, 19 yards. The lead is three. Eric Moulds, Keyshawn Johnson were focal points. Pass catching. The Buccaneers were up short thinking there might be an onside kick. So Riddell Anthony has to go back, back and take the touchback. And the flag is down. Might have been offside against Buffalo. I think it's about all it can be clear back there at the 30-yard line. Ooh, this makes everybody happy to chance to run all the way down under a kickoff again. Take another block in the open field. Offside by the kicking team. Five yard penalty for a kick. But yeah, he's frustrated. But you know something? You can't make Sean King grow any quicker than he's going to grow. And people forget that he didn't come in as the starter until the 11th game last year. So he's played about one full season. So he's really at the end of a rookie year. The try again by Christie. And uh, Liddell Anthony takes it at the six. Good wedge. 40. And Christie able to jersey tackle him out of bounds. And the fly goes down. At the 49 of Buffalo, if it counts, a 47-yard return by the former Florida star, Rita Anthony. The flag was away there from was the... No there was no foul on the play. No foul on the play. Tampa Bay ball, first down. Well, we've had an inadvertent whistle, an inadvertent flag. Okay, take a Redell Anthony, a, a very accomplished open field runner, but this is good blocking. Behind his wedge and then breaks to the right when the Buffalo coverage falls apart. Anthony with a kickoff return duties because Aaron Stecker was hurt on the first play of the game. Warwick Dunn just eluded the big arm of one of the uh, tackles, and a flag is down. And this time it is against Tampa Bay. Holding offense, number 83, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. And brings up first down 18 as uh, Sean King checks that play uh, wristband, makes the call. Intercepted by Pat Williams, who came back from his defensive tackle position. Chris Watson had uh, batted the ball free from Yaquez Green. Well, this is <laughs> this is not the guy you expect to see. Look at that, right off the hands of Chris Watson. Oh boy, Chris Watson had an easy interception. Oh, did he make the break? Get right in front, and he's got that ball right in his hands. 
It was Warwick Dunn that almost got uh, the carom in front of Pat Williams. Here's Dunn. Grabbed from behind and dragged down by Hollisek. Foreman there as well. Third down, 16. King, lots of time, and then has to swallow it at the 44-yard line. Corey Moore, 54, gets him down. Well, fans didn't like that, but uh, King doesn't want to throw the pick. No, but Buffalo sits in a two-deep zone a lot of the time, and they're just not going to give up a long play. Take a look at the coverage downfield. This is what Sean King is seeing. Right here, all his receivers are covered with both safeties back behind. So what choice does he have? He's not going to make a mistake throwing into coverage. No short route on that pattern. Moore to Watson at the 10. And he's tackled as he hits the 15-yard line by Al Singleton. Tackled by Singleton. Dexter Jackson, a piece of the play as well, a 46-yard punt. 648 remains. Buffalo with the ball, trailing by three. And welcome back to Tampa. Gray, wet day as Buffalo starts deep in its own end. Just across the 15-yard line, Rob Johnson engineered a quick scoring drive last possession to pull the Bills within three. And that missed field goal at the end of the first half looming bigger and bigger for Buffalo. Johnson in a crowd able to get back to the line of scrimmage. I don't know if that'll be a sack or not as Kyoka Jackson a backup Kyoka tackle Jackson. from Penn State makes the hit. Eight of one. Second down nine for the 16. Again, Rob Johnson pulling it. He's going to take off. And that time he knew he was going to get caught. But credit the secondary of Tampa. He's got nowhere to go with the football. And in a tight game like this, we're not seeing either quarterback take much in the way of a foolish chance downfield. See, Tampa Bay has not been fortunate in close games this year. Johnson, how to get out of that mess? Now looking. Finally throws out of bounds to Peerless Price. And Rob Johnson, I, I, you got to give him credit. He's he's not going to throw the football away. He's going to try to make the completion, regardless of how big a hit he knows he's going to take. To save his body, he should have just thrown this thing away. Once he busts out of the pocket, he gets away from the right here. You know, the easy way out is to dump it, but he holds it, holds it, and ends up taking a big shot. Boy, he is one tough hombre. Son of a coach out in Southern California at USC. His receiver his senior year was Keyshawn Johnson. Look at the hits he's taken today. Third and nine. He fires to Moles. Incomplete. And almost intercepted. Moles was open. One of the few tosses by Johnson. A bit off the mark. Too tall. And Johnson is buried again. And that one hurt. I think Tyoka Jackson was the guy who got him. Watch half the play. That's Jackson and oh. Johnson just driven into the ground. Look at Eric Moulds elevate to try to get that football. It hit him right on the hands. Williams keep to receive. And Dexter Jackson very close to getting the interception is Chris Moore, who hasn't punted well. 32 yard average needs a big one here, and he gets one. Driving this one to Carl Williams all the way to the 27 yard line. But the danger of long punts are long. And apparently will come back. One of the reasons they like more is he kicks it high and they're tough to return. He had to try to get the ball deep this time to move the field position, but that opened up things for Carl Williams. 42 yards is the longest return for Williams from Texas A&M Kingsville. This would be. Uh, well, we're having a conference here, Dick. If it counts, this one will go in bold print in his biography. 73-yard touchdown. Will it count? Here's the news. 
There was no foul on the play for holding. It was double team action by Rule. No foul. Touchdown. It was what? Double team action. Got to get out by football. It's like two, two players blocking on one guy. Wade Phillips right now trying to make the explanation. You almost automatically assume in that situation that the flag is on the return team. So Carl Williams touchdown, a 73-yard return, and Gramatica's extra point gives the Buccaneers a 10-point lead again. Well, just a superior punt by Moore, and again, when you get a chance, Williams to field it, and you get, he got a couple good blocks rather than take it to the sidelines, and Moore, the only guy with a shot right there, misses. And Dick, you called it a lot of times. You'll, that's the old phrase, out kicking your coverage, and that's exactly what happened. But give Williams and give about three guys on that return team. Right there, you see a good block. John McLaughlin made a key block. 50, Jeff Gooch, yep. two. But you almost bet money when a flag is thrown there that this one is going to come back. Boy, look at the blocks. And that's really, there's not a punter in the league that out in the middle of the field that a dead stop is going to be able to make a tackle on a decent return man. First time since Rondé Barber turned one back against Chicago a couple of years ago. Punt return for score. And now the destiny for the Buffalo Bills uh, better defined. They are down by 10. And Buffalo having to go to Kansas City last week and win at Arrowhead. And we welcome those of you that have watched the Baltimore Ravens win impressively after giving up the opening touchdown to the Cleveland Browns as Baltimore goes nine and four. Dick Enberg and Deirdre Bonnie Bernstein here in Tampa, Florida, where a punt return by Carl Williams has just electrified this crowd. A 73-yard touchdown and a 24-14 lead for the Buccaneers. After 25 seconds, there was no pick. I know we've had an inadvertent uh, uh, whistle and inadvertent two of those flags and now an inadvertent kick. Well, you're not allowed to go until the referee signals that the ball is in play. That happened in the Super Bowl once. That's right. It's, it's <laughs> Minneapolis. Mart Martin Gramatica is going, what the heck is going on? I thought he started me. Now the Buffalo Bills coming in uh, tied for second place in the AFC East, one game behind Miami. Tampa Bay, one of the preseason favorites to make it to the Super Bowl, but struggling at six and five. This is a crucial game for the home team, coached by Tony Dungy. And uh, it has seesawed. Most of the yardage has been earned by Buffalo, but uh, Tampa Bay has maintained its lead and inspired by its uh, great defense. Well, and we just saw inspired by their special teams. It really opened up this cushion with the kick return, the punt return by Carl Williams. Wow. Dramatica. A good kick. Watson at the two. Chris Watson, the former Denver Bronco. And Rondé Barber runs him out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And that's uh, Tony Dungy's son. Eric, I believe his name is. Yeah, good hands, yeah. good feet. And the boy, <laughs> you, does he look like dad or what? That's good. What a, we've been watching him run up and down the sidelines all day, and he has been smiling ear to ear. But I think that smile just got a little bigger on young Eric after the punt return. And daddy, too, although he's hiding it. Dad's not going to smile until this one's in the book. Right. That look would be lying. What a terrific man lies underneath. He's... Well, in a situation like this where you're protecting a 10-point lead, this is the front four you'd like to have getting after the quarterback. Led by Warren Sapp, number 99 in the center of that defense. Five wide. Johnson buying time. Anybody open? No, he has to run it out of bounds and gains a couple. Marcus Jones, who had 11 sacks coming into this game, 
As he compliments Warren Sapp. Sapp, by the way, has broken the Tampa Bay record with sacks today. Now has 13 and a half. That breaks Leroy Selman, the Hall of Famers franchise mark. Leroy Selman was a man. And still <laughs> is. <laughs> what a defensive end Leroy Selman was. Wow. <laughs> one of the greats ever to walk on a football field. And one of the brightest defensive linemen in the world. Academic All America Hall of Fame. Underneath, uh, Eric Moles, who has one touchdown today, leads the league in catches coming in with 76 and has now uh, seven today. Now for the first down at the 30 yard line, 433 left. All timeouts remain, both sides. But it was the timeout situation that uh, betrayed Buffalo at the end of the first half, and they missed a golden chance to score at least three. Johnson. And he throws it away. Jeremy McDaniel, the closest white jersey. Sapp and Jones putting on the pressure. Four minutes, 13 seconds remain. When Rob Johnson leaves the pocket. His receivers have really got to get frantic downfield trying to get away from somebody. That time, Rob broke out of the pocket, and it looked like every white shirt that was downfield was standing right next to somebody from Tampa and not moving. Or had their back to him. Yeah, it's you need a little help in this game. It's tough for one guy to do it alone. Johnson, 229 yards and two touchdowns today. No interceptions. And the throw complete. It's uh, to Jeremy McDaniel, who has twisted out of bounds at the 45-yard line, as we welcome those of you who've been watching CBS football action elsewhere. Tampa Bay leading the Buffalo Bills 24-14. And the official on the sideline ruled that McDaniel was in bounds, and so he kept the clock winding, ruled it a forward progress, and the play was over, so the clock continues to run. Buffalo's got to get with it. Three minutes, 40 seconds left. The Bills trail by 10. Carl Williams, 73-yard punt return for a touchdown here in the fourth quarter. The big difference has Mould, a rare drop by Eric Mould. He tried to run before he caught the ball. Well, you don't see this very often. Eric Mould has caught just about everything that has come his way so far in this game. Take a look at it right here. Let's watch. Look at the head. Look downfield. It's, that's a classic look where you took your eye off the football and didn't watch it come into your hands. And he was looking at John Lynch, a remarkable starter, dislocated shoulder a week ago as you look at the game summary. As uh, all the yards belong to Buffalo, but the score is on uh, the Buccaneers' side. Johnson winds up and then winds down. Derek Brooks for a fumble, and it goes to Sean Bryson. Bryson actually got a shovel pass. And Rob Johnson didn't see it. He is down on his face at the 30-yard line. Rob Johnson is hurt. But what a job he did of getting rid of the football before he's planted by Derrick Brooks. All-out blitz here. Derrick Brooks has and throws him into the ground. But Rob Johnson, fooling everybody, just flips it to Bryson but what you know you're not supposed to be able to sling the quarterback like that again let's take a look at the velocity with which Rob Johnson is thrown into the ground but really that's when you look at it from that angle there's really not much else that Derrick Brooks that's could have done just unfortunate for Rob Johnson that he hit the ground that hard but he sure made a heck of a play before he went down Meanwhile, this remarkable last-ditch effort, and Johnson just down, you know, just the last second, making that yeah. one play to keep this drive alive and taking the punishment and giving his Bills a chance. Doug Flutie will come in for him, and he, uh, we talked to him yesterday. I mean, of all the quarterbacks in the league, and they all get beat up, I mean, he's he gets the biggest medal so far this year. I mean, anything that could be injured, Johnson has suffered it this season. Well, he holds the ball until the last minute. Rob Johnson takes a lot of hits, a lot of them because he will not get rid of the football early. Take a look at the things that have happened to Rob Johnson this season. Keep in mind, he missed four games in the middle of the season. 
We didn't even count the knee injury. Remember the bursa sack that burst, and it was twice the size of a normal knee. A flag is down, and Ed Hockley will sort this out as well. They still attend to Johnson at the 30. Finally, have him in a seated position. If this flag was not backed by Rob Johnson. I didn't see a flag thrown during the play. Oh, he's woozy. I think when he was thrown down on that body slam, his helmet hit first. Taunting by the defense, number 99. Went into the opposing team's bench area. 15 yard penalty, half the distance to the goal. Warren Sapp uh, using a little extra verbiage, uh, crossing the line as he did earlier this week, actually a couple days ago Friday, when he openly criticized Les Steckel, the offensive coordinator, for what he felt was not a good offense and said he supported Mike Shula, who had been replaced by Steckel. Well, now a lot of the Buccaneer defense is over in the Buffalo sideline, in the bench area, because that's where the play ended. When they ran Bryson out of bounds, it was into the Buffalo bench. I don't think that Warren Sapp was the only Tampa Bay player that was in Buffalo's bench. Look, here's the end of the play. There's Derek Brooks. And, then, and there is, there's Warren Sapp. Look how quickly that flag comes down. I'm not even sure that yeah, was 99. No, that, that, was, that was James that, Canada, 98. And, and I, Set must have come in later. He had to come in well after that, but you saw the flag. Before. I don't get that one. Doug Flutie, who warmed up hurriedly in the bullpen, and here comes little Flutie diving at the 10 yard line as Shelton Quarles secures the tackle. 302, 301, clock running. The Bills do have three timeouts, two minute warning yet. You know, Dick, I want to go back to how, how could a flag come in that quickly for taunting? I don't think that flag, that couldn't have been. There's got to be another explanation. Second down and nine. Flutie fires. Almost intercepted. It was in the arms of Jamie Duncan, who had drifted back in front of Eric Moulds. Flag down. And here comes Rob Johnson back in. Can you believe this? Well, Doug Flutie throws that right into the hands of Jamie Duncan, who has two interceptions on the year. Duncan, the middle linebacker, replacing Hardy Nickerson this season. But look at this. Rob Johnson somehow got rid of the cobwebs. Third and nine. Now he throws to Peerless Price, who can't get out of the end zone, as he was well secured, pinned in that corner by Donnie Abraham, and they'll take the field goal here. They're going to need one sooner or later, and I hope they can get the ball back for a touchdown drive to tie. Now, you have to think if this was fourth and a couple of yards, that Wade would probably take the opportunity to try for the touchdown, but at fourth, at fourth and nine, forget it. you got to take the field goal. Christie missed a 42-yard field goal purring at the end of the first half. This one in a relaxed state, able to pound it through and make it 24-17. And we welcome you joining us here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, where the Buccaneers lead the Bills 24-17, intensely fought. Despite the score, it has been a defensive game. Rob Johnson courageously knocked out, came back, uh, has engineered a field goal drive to pull within seven. There's Sean King, the quarterback of the Buccaneers. He scored on the two-yard scramble. There's been a bushel basket worth of uh, sacks. Both defenses uh, have punished the quarterback. Uh, and Tampa Bay has somewhere in the vicinity of like 140 yards total offense, which is a pretty paltry amount. But they've got huge pressure from their defensive line. They got a special teams touchdown with a punt return. 13 sacks so far in this game. The Bucks have six. The Bills have seven. 
see the yardage difference. Uh, Christie with 227 left. Both teams have all timeouts remaining. Uh, the Tampa Bay thus far not respecting the onside kick. No, and I, and I think the key is with all three timeouts remaining, you got to kick it away and go for field position and count on your defense to give you a three and out. Now there are the Buffalo defensive injuries. Winfield in the bottom out for the season, injured last week out with a surgery on his shoulder. Hansen's been out for about a month. He was maybe going to be out another week, might come back next week. Sam Rogers, uh, he was hurt in this game. Donovan Greer was hurt coming in. He's played a couple plays, but then Coward and Carpenter both lost to the Buccaneers in this game. This is uh, regardless of how they come out winning or losing this game. A costly effort for Buffalo today, injury-wise. Well, this looks like the onside kick as they've got all their players crowded here on the near sidelines. And that's where the kick goes. And the diving play, what a good play made by the Buccaneers' David Gibson, the rookie from Southern California. I am really surprised. I am really surprised that Buffalo didn't kick that ball deep. Given the success that they have had controlling the Tampa offense, you have now just given them tremendous field position on your side of the field. There's offside against Buffalo, but of course that'll be declined as Tampa Bay takes the ball at the 39-yard line, almost already in field goal range. Bonnie Bernstein is with us down on the sideline. Shoulder tackle of Wiley and Foreman, and Buffalo spends its first time out with 217 left. This is a short timeout. Ward Dunn with a touchdown six yards today with Mike Allstock, the big fullback, out for probably the rest of the year. Left knee injury, they say four to eight weeks, might come back for the playoffs. And we asked Tony Dungy, there's Mike on the sidelines now. We asked him best case scenario he said four weeks the doctors are saying six to eight so it's conceivable that if Tampa Bay is a wild card team and has to play I guess that Mike Hall's not an outside chance of maybe being able to come back how productive he would be that remains to be seen obviously then the other side is no one expected the other pro no. bowler that was injured last week John Lynch the safety man to play today and he starts and he's made a, a serious contribution uh, we, it was we have seen nothing short of a miraculous effort by John Lynch in playing with a dislocated shoulder second and nine they did make a yard on first down done there it goes he's on his way The first really explosive play for Tampa offensively today. Look at the size of the hole on the left. Ted Washington not able to get an arm on Warwick Dunn. And that is just superior work up front by Pearson and McDaniel. Christie, Frank Middleton, Jerry Wunsch. Not even close to stopping Warwick Dunn. And why they didn't kick it deep, I don't know. Romatica has the extra point. And it's 31-17, and Warwick Dunn, 106 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns. It's hard to imagine that this talented back had scored only one rushing touchdown all year, gets two today. Again, take a look at this up front. Nobody at home on the right side of Buffalo's defense and Warwick Dunn, I, about that point, I'm sure couldn't believe his good fortune to be that that open on a running play, especially at a critical time of the game like that. It's the first 100-yard uh, rusher Buffalo has allowed this year. 